Hey, welcome to Everyday Reviews and welcome to beautiful Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. That's the Pacific behind me. We have the brand new Subaru Solterra. This is an all electric vehicle from Subaru. And you know what? We're actually gonna take this off road and check out some of the cool initiatives Subaru's involved in. This is our first time in the Subaru Solterra, but we have driven a vehicle very similar, which was the Toyota BZ4X. You see, just in case you didn't know, both vehicles are part of a joint project between the two automakers, which is why they share a lot of things. The Subaru does get a little bit of a different style, especially in the front. Of course, you get that synonymous wheel cladding, which is very Subaru, so, I think the BZ gets a little bit of Subaru style in this department. Overall, it's edgy and it's a real head turner for those that are really used to looking at regular Subarus. All right, inside of the Solterra, you will notice there is a sound. There's a chiming that happens when you're backing up. I'll just let you know, but it does have the backup camera as well as the 360 camera that has that kind of see-through feature on it. Okay, let's put it back into drive. Now, on the inside of this Solterra, it is like no other Subaru product at all because, you know, this is a partnership with Toyota. Uh, but one thing that's very, very different between the two, it's the steering wheel. And this is new for 2024. Um, Subaru has kind of like chopped off the top of the steering wheel. You have a square bottom, square top. And why they did that was so you could actually view the driver display better. And, and I think it works. And I like how they've, this display here is put far back and it kind of eliminates the need for a head up display because you can see everything and you're not having to look through uh, the steering wheel. Also below there, there is a driver attention camera now. A standard base trim gets an eight inch screen while this is the luxury, it gets a 12.3 inch uh, audio system, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto comes standard with it, nice and bright. It's very, very quick. I like that for sure. Seat wise, we have heating on the front and the back. No ventilation though, but that does come with the technology trim. And in that package, you'll get ventilated seats as well as you get the glass panel roof, which this one doesn't have. Lots of storage here. I like the door panels. Uh, the middle console has storage. Underneath this bridge here is a great place that's got some nice walls on it. There is no front glove compartment though. That's a little bit unfortunate. I'd like to have a little bit of extra room there. Um, very funky design. You know, you gotta say, like even the materials, it's like a cloth, cloth material on the dash. I'm not sure how well that'll hold up, but you know what? It's not something that you touch all the time. So I'm sure that'll be fine. Uh, but just lots of different textures and materials going on here for this uh, Subaru Solterra. The one thing that I do wish for this though is that the seats would go down lower. I feel like, well, they're as low as they go, but I feel like I'm riding so high and a lot of drivers will like that, but you know what? I just wanna be nice and low. But of course, if I was too low, I wouldn't be able to see that front screen. So maybe they, they placed it like that for that reason. In the back seat, you'll see there is ample headroom back here. The seats do not slide forward or back, but legroom is very generous and room for your feet here. On this particular luxury, we do have two USBs and we have heated seats in the rear as well. There's our vents in the center, but there is no individual climate control. All right, we're on the road. We've been driving for a couple of days in this new Solterra. Uh, today is a pretty rainy day. It's foggy as well. I'll also give you some beautiful shots of some of the roads that we drove uh, yesterday. But uh, let's give you some numbers, first of all, for this new EV from Subaru. Okay, we have 
a standard all-wheel drive, an 80 kilowatt motor in the front and 80 kilowatt motor in the back, giving you a total of 215 horsepower and 348 pound-feet of torque. Uh, so range-wise, 359 kilometers and max charging is 100 kilowatts, but there is a but where for there because they have changed something and this is a big deal. They have included a water to water heat exchanger. Now this is not for uh, heating the compartment of the vehicle at all. This is to optimize your charging speeds. So it will charge at a max speed for longer now. They've also changed it. So previously you could only DC fast charge, you know, at a very quick speed, two times a day. Uh, so if you were going on a real long road trip after two times, you're gonna get throttled back. Yeah, that wasn't a great thing. So they've addressed that. Now you can go four plus times a day for DC fast charging. I don't know how much you're gonna drive. That's pretty crazy. But this new heat exchanger will optimize, basically precondition the battery. You can't do it manually. It'll just always try to have that battery in the optimal temperature so it can charge as quick and for longer. So previously 10 to 80% was 60 minutes. Now, 35 minutes. It is almost 50, it's basically cut it in half. That's incredible. Uh, and that's gonna make a big difference for the people doing road trips and DC fast charging. Uh, so yeah, 100 kilowatts is decent in, in my books. Uh, I don't do a lot of road trips, but even when I do use a DC fast charger, a lot of times you don't see chargers that are faster than that. Uh, so yeah, not a big deal there. Also for charging, they have now included a new cable. So this cable will allow you to actually charge for 110 or 240, so there's actually an adapter, which means you can eliminate, if this is your first EV, and you don't have a charger at home, but you have a 240 plug in your garage, maybe for a dryer or something like that, you can actually just plug that directly into the wall, and that's gonna save you money uh, for a charger, for sure. On road, hey, this is not a WRX uh, that you're driving, so it doesn't have that major sportiness of that, but it definitely can handle its own. This is an EV. It cruises very, very nicely. It's quiet uh, in this cabin. I did mention on the interior, and I'm gonna mention it again, I do wish that I could sit a little bit lower. It's just a little too tall for me, uh, you know, but that's just me. As for safety, the 2024 gets the IIHS Top Safety uh, Pick Plus. So that's as high as you can go. That's always a comforting thing to know. Overall, I think the updates are pretty substantial on this 2024 model. Subaru really has listened to their customers. All right, time for a shameless plug. Why? Because Subaru Canada kind of deserves it. We all know that Subaru is an outdoor brand, so it's only natural that a company like this contributes to programs like their Subaru Adventure On. Launched a few years ago, Subaru Canada contributes over $100,000 into the Parks Canada Conservation and Restoration Program promoting conservation, camping education, responsible park use, and overall sustainability of the natural places we like to enjoy. Oh, and they get some pretty cool Subarus to get to and from the parks. Subaru Canada is also the presenting partner for the Leave No Trace Canada Pledge, and they're halfway there of their 10,000 trees planted goal. So if you take that pledge, hey, 25 trees will be planted on your behalf. Okay, it's foggy out here. It's raining out here. This is the perfect condition to take this off-road. Without an issue. Zero issue. <laughs> I love it when car manufacturers have a lot of faith in their product and they are having a lot of faith in this Subaru Solterra for sure. So it's dark out right now, it's foggy, it's raining, it's slippery, we're running on full, just stock all season tires on here at this Enduro Park. This is kind of made for motorcycles even, uh, but we have dual function X mode on this Solterra just like other Subarus have. And you know, a lot of Subaru owners, well, they like the outdoors and they often take their vehicles off the beaten path. So this is really extreme. This is the most extreme 
example that I've had, we're going downhill, that's a hill descent by the way. I'm not actually using the brake. That's the sound, it's intervening. And um, this is really extreme. So this also has on the X mode, you have grip control where you can set it so it's almost like cruise control for off-road. So we are going to make sure we're gonna turn on our grip control and here you can adjust uh, how much speed that you get and we're gonna probably help it along uh, but yeah it's really really slick here here we go let's uh, let's go for it here and oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> what's wild that is it's so quiet because it's an EV um, so you just basically hear like rocks and dirt getting thrown around and once again perfect example of use of the camera, here we see it here, and we can see around the corner. All right, the Salterra has 210 millimeters of ground clearance, which is only 10 millimeters short from some of their other SUVs, but the most clearance in any vehicle in this class. And like for instance, the Ionic 5, or the Mustang Mach-E, the Chevrolet Blazer EV, quite a bit more clearance for sure. And it's definitely helpful on a course and conditions like this. Coming up to a large hill here, okay. Hello. Hello. Good to go and in, uh, in, uh, we're gonna go into uh, about there? There you go. Just above mid? That's perfect. Okay. All right, so just uh, about more than half for grip control. Foot off the accelerator, off the brake. We're gonna go climb up this really muddy hill. And we're gonna just crawl up. This is seriously a piece of cake. Woo! It just looks flat, I'm sure, on camera. And the nice thing being an EV, it can apply the torque instantly. You don't have to build up any type of engine speed to get that type of torque, which makes it way more controllable. But the fact that it's capable of doing it is really a testament, uh, once again, of how confident that Subaru is with their products, for sure. While driving this around Vancouver Island here, I can't believe how many people are stopping to have a look at this new Salterra. It definitely does not have the traditional Subaru look. What do you think? Leave a comment below. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Ciao. Like always, if you like this video or any other content on this channel, I've got a lot of videos out there, not just for cars, by the way, we have tech stuff, even automated lawnmowers and travel uh, reviews as well. Uh, hit that like and subscribe button. First of all, it doesn't cost anything. It's absolutely free. I do all of this uh, free of charge for you. If you could hit that like and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated.